Topic one was how do you make training fun and approachable? This is a pretty good question because as a dog trainer, it gets really easy to get into your head as far as, you know, training doesn't have to be fun or approachable or anything like that, yeah. right? In the end of the day, we're training for functionality. We're training for real world. We're training for uh, just a... Um, better behaved dog and a better relationship in life with the dog right yeah. but at the same time to some people the idea of training can be very off-putting right regardless of where you're at in your relationship with your dog and i think a lot of that stems from um i i think a lot of that stems from this idea that some trainers have created of turning your dog into a robot right or changing your dog's personality yeah. or any of these number of things mm -hmm. that i find clients will say as concerns when they're getting ready to sign up for programs i don't want my dog to be a robot i don't want my dog to 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 be super militant all the time stuff like that right yeah so i think our job is not necessarily how do we make it fun but i think the correct word is the approachableness right how do we yeah. get people understanding that that's not the goal Right. Mm. And frankly, I think a lot of this comes on a trainer by trainer basis. Right. I've always looked at you have different trainers for different things. Right. And what I mean by that is I like to think that I am a pretty universally approachable trainer from the standpoint of I think the way that I live with my dogs is a similar type of life that a lot of people want to live with their dogs, which is the dogs are dogs. They hang out. They get to enjoy being a part of things. We get to have fun with them. We get to take them anywhere with us. We get to be off leash. They get to go for really long, enjoyable walks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I am not this guy that's like, your dog needs to be in command every four seconds. And if you tell them sit and they down, you need to correct them and get them back into the sit. And everything yeah. needs to be super precise and fancy and this and that. Like, I got all of that out of my system in, like, my first two years of training dogs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was over that very quickly as I realized that didn't fit into my life because that required a never-ending cycle of being 100% micromanaging of my dogs no matter what I was doing. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. On the contrary, you have some trainers out there that are like that. They preach that everything is precise, everything is fancy, everything is super militant, this, that. And I think there are some people that want that out of their dog. There are some mm. people that adopt this mentality of like, I want to be managing my dog all the time. I want to be micromanaging yeah. them. I want to feel like they're super uh, 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 well-trained and it's kind of like an ego-driven thing and stuff like that. Yeah. And there are some people that want that, but the problem is that type of trainer is not going to appeal to your general public, right? Yeah. If anything, those are the types of trainers that are going to create this negative association with things, mm -hmm. right? Then you have the complete opposite side of things, which we see primarily in the positive-only community, which is these trainers that are out there basically preaching we're only nice to our dogs ever, which... <sighs> Again, I get that's the fun and approachable mentality, yeah. right? <laughs> but then you look at the real life application of that and what that looks like is hours and hours of work every single day. It involves making everything that you do with your dog kind of a production because there's so much prep work that goes into it and so mm -hmm. much alertness that needs to go into it. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it's something that a lot of people get to initially because it's approachable, right? But once yeah. they're in it, they realize very quickly it's not what they actually want, mm -hmm. right? So again, getting back to the question of how do we shift this? We shift this through managing, right? Or managing expectations with our clients. We, ship, we shift this through um, creating a different image of what training looks like. We shift this by highlighting not the obedience and not all of the work and stuff that we're doing, but the freedoms that it allows our dogs to have. I highlight me going to the park and playing off-leash with my dogs. I highlight my dogs going for these super fun off-leash hikes. I yeah. highlight, you know, any of these types of things that showcase my dogs enjoying themselves, enjoying my company, and being extremely well-behaved without the need of being micromanaged, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's how we start to overall shift that state of mind in that world.